Okay, I'm going to finish my discussion of the variance of loss at issue random variables by doing a couple discrete problems. So this is a previous exam problem. They give us that k, I guess k bar qx, or the probability that an x-year-old lives k years and then fails to live the next year is 0.5 to the k plus 1. And they would like us to find the variance of v to the k plus 1 minus the premium times a, an annuity due k plus 1. So first of all, let's make sure we understand what k even is. Um, just like t of x is your future lifetime, just call it t. Let's say, let's say you live 8.29 more years. K is the number of whole years that you live. So if you really live 8.29 more years, you live 8 complete years. Um, if your future lifetime was 10.82, then you would live k equals 10 more complete years. So since our insurance pays at the end of year of death, this might be the number of complete years that you live, but it's not going to pay till the end of that year, or k plus 1. And then it's going to get discounted back from that point to now. So v to the k plus 1 is really going to be the true present value of, an, of a whole life insurance that pays at the end of the year of death. And that's important to see here. So I'm going to rewrite this before we do anything as Maybe it's, not, it's easier for me to see what's going on if I write this in terms of insurances. So this V to the K plus 1, like we said, is the same thing as the true present value of a whole life insurance payable at the end of the year of death. And it looks here like we're working with an X-year-old. Less the amount of the premiums that we bring in. So um, they denote the premium here as PX. Um, times the true present value of our annuity on x. Okay, now let's go back to this um, probability that an x-year-old lives k years and then fails to live the next year. What that's telling me is that each year I have a 0.5 probability of dying, um, no matter what happens. So I have a constant force of mortality. Um, I guess this is the correct way to write it. I would just write Q equals 0.5. In each year, my probability of dying is always 0.5. That's easier for me to understand. OK, so we're trying to find the variance of a discrete whole life insurance on x. And they don't tell us specifically in the problem that premiums are calculated according to the equivalence principle. They probably should because um, I think that that has to be true to get this to work out. Um, so I won't work all the way through this because I did it in a previous video, but If you rewrite this um, so that the premium, since we're assuming it's calculated by the equivalence principle, if you rewrite this so that the premium is the insurance over the annuity, and then you rewrite the um, annuities in terms of um, the insurance, you'll get that the variance is the second moment of our insurance, our whole life insurance payable at the end of the year of death, 
minus the, pres the actuarial present value of our insurance payable at the end of the year of death squared over 1 minus the insurance quantity squared. Okay, so let's try to come up with a value for our insurance, for the actuarial present value of our insurance. Um, so we'll think about what could happen in each year. If I die the first year, I will get a payment of one. The benefit here is one discounted back with one year of interest. So that's going to be V. If I die in the second year, if I live the first year and then die in the second year, my payment of one will be discounted back two years. And that goes on and on forever. Okay, we already said that in each year, the probability of dying is 0.5. So I know that this is going to be 0.5e plus 0.5 times 0.5. Um, so that's you live the first year and you die the second year. times v squared, okay, and on and on and on until um, you live the first year, you live the second year, you live the third year, 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5, and then you die in the last year, it's still 0.5, because 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5. So it goes all the way up to 0.5 to the infinity, v to the infinity. So in each term here, you just continue to multiply by an additional 0.5v. So I always use four summations I always remember that it's the first term times 1 minus the ratio to the number of terms over 1 minus the ratio. Okay, here that's our first term, 0.5v, times 1 minus our ratio, each time we're multiplying by the same thing, by 0.5v, to the infinity, over 1 minus our ratio, 0.5v. Okay, and 0.5v to the infinity is going to go to 0. So this simplifies to 0.5v over 1 minus 0.5v. Um, I'm going to pull out a 0.5 just to make that look a little bit nicer. Um, in the numerator and the denominator, so I guess 0.5 over 0.5. That'll be v over 2 minus v. So that's our... That's the actuarial present value of our whole life insurance on X that pays at the end of the year of death. And if you remember, the only other piece we needed was the second moment. We get the second moment by calculating the same way as we did for the actuarial present value of the insurance except at twice the force of interest. So V is E to the negative force of interest times T, times whatever time that you're at. So if we want to calculate at twice the force of interest, that's the same thing as saying V squared. So our second moment is just going to be V squared over 2 minus B. Okay, and you'll remember that we said our variance was going to be the second moment minus the actuarial present value of the insurance squared over 1 minus the insurance quantity squared. Okay, 
So when you plug these in and do a bit of algebraic simplification, you should get it. Let's see what did I get? You should get. The variance equals one half times b squared over two minus b squared. All right, and that was a multiple choice problem. They gave you like a bunch of different answers with v's and one halves and things like that. So you did have to do a little bit of work to get it into the form that they wanted. Um, you could also do this problem with. Um, a formula that they just, I saw a formula in my study manual that they just give you if the force of mortality is constant. I guess if you wanted to, you could just remember um, that the variance is, I guess it's q times 1 minus q all over q plus twice the force of interest. I sort of like the approach of just understanding what's going on and working it out with the summation, but whichever way it works better for you. I did it both ways and they both worked fine. So hope that was helpful and happy studying.